Before the mid-60s, Americans had never heard the term SUV, but the Ford Motor Company changed all that. In 1966, the new Bronco was an instant hit when it first rolled off the assembly line. Now, a group of craftsmen in this small shop is looking to rekindle that 50-year-old spark. They're bringing new life to an original Bronco and giving it modern-day technology underneath. Their mission, make an American legend even better. Welcome to Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, a lot of us have memories of riding in classic Broncos like these when we were kids, but you get behind the wheel of an original Bronco today and you'll realize that 50 plus years of technological advancements are enough to shatter those childhood memories. In its day, Bronco handled and performed much better than any other truck and SUV out there, but the leaders of the 1960s sports utility movement are no match for even the most basic SUV today. But that's where the folks at Brand New Muscle Car come in. They're breathing new life into a legend and giving an old classic modern day performance. With any sort of a four wheel drive off-road vehicle, suspension is key. No different here on the Bronco. Heavy duty leaf springs, heavy duty springs. The rear ends are heavy duty. They've been rebuilt, the transfer case. It's a four wheel drive. We put a two and a half inch lift on it. We put 33 inch wheels and tires on it. We're gonna put great shocks on it. So we're gonna put a real emphasis on the suspension because with four wheel drive, that's where it's at. Normally we're building cars, muscle cars usually. But you know, the thing about Richard is, our mechanic, we're doing suspension, we're doing mechanical on a Bronco. He happens to be a four wheel drive nut. He's owned a whole series of off-road vehicles. He loves it. Not cool, cool. <laughs> Not cool, cool. Yeah. It's a challenge for us, and it's a challenge for Richard as well, but he really, really loves his vehicles. Richard and Omar want to be able to set up and adjust the suspension while it's under load. So this is a good opportunity to test fit the Coyote engine before installing right, it permanently. It we jokingly call him Dr. Richard because he'll get scientific on it. He'll freak it out and, and, and totally break it down and say, you know, what do you want to do with this truck? How off-road are we going? Is it street? Is it strip? Is it off-road? And how much? And are we crawling rocks? Are we going through mud? And so we've had those conversations and figured out how high does it need to be, how much clearance, the wheels and tires. Richard's real big on will it turn, will it go over bumps? And that's something you need to a mechanical guy. Let's talk about what shocks do and why we need them. Right now, the Bronco has no shocks on it. It's sitting on the springs. And as you can see, it's pretty bouncy. Same way on the rear. Coil springs in the front, leaf springs in the rear, same effect. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. The springs, all they do is hold the vehicle up. So that's their job. The shocks are what control the springs. So obviously you can see there's no control going on here at all. It's just a mess. Shock technology has evolved constantly. They come out with something new all the time. So on our Bronco here, this is pretty much what it started off with. A hydraulic, small diameter tube shock that didn't do a whole lot as far as controlling the spring. Now on a bone stock vehicle with small tires, no lift, it was marginal at best then. Well, as you can see now, lift kit, bigger wheels and tires, bigger engine, more weight in the truck. There's a lot of stuff going on, so we need to upgrade our shocks. On the front, this vehicle came with two shocks, one on each side. Well, a real popular mod back in the day was to convert to quad shock or four shocks in the front. As with our Bronco here, originally it was a six owner. Sometime in the 80s, it got a V8 swap. Sometime shortly after that, somebody converted it to quad shock in the front. And the reason why is you're putting another 200 pounds or so over the nose of the truck. So we have to add shocks to compensate for that. You don't want this thing bouncing down the road on you. So what we have here just aren't two regular shocks and two regular shocks. These shocks are specifically valved to run in a quad shock system. That way you don't overcompensate and put too much shock on the truck. On the rear, we're okay with just running two shocks, one on each side. They're easily twice the size of the original stuff, not only in length, but in tube size. Where the tube size comes into play is inside this tube, you have a whole lot more room for oil and for the valving that goes along with it. Our little single shock here just basically has one washer with an O-ring on it and a couple of holes drilled in it, and that's all it does. I mean, literally, 
and this one's fairly new. When these things get old, it's almost like an accordion. You can just push them together and pull them apart. These new ones have twice the capacity, twice the dampening effectiveness, and that's going to control all that suspension movement that we just witnessed. So let's get the wheels off the Bronco, start putting these things on. And when we come back, Richard and Omar will do just that. They'll put modern shocks on this classic Bronco Resto Mod. And we'll show you where owners and builders go to get parts and accessories for their classic Broncos. And new Muscle Car Classic Bronco is brought to you by Raybuck Auto Body Parts, providing quality restoration parts since 1985. Kicker Performance Audio, living loud. And by Tom's Bronco Parts, the largest inventory around of 66 to 77 Ford Bronco Parts and Accessories. Back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the crew here at the shop are used to creating brand new muscle cars from scratch, but this build is different. It's a 1966 Bronco, but everything on it is all brand new. That means finding everything from suspension to seats to trim and even bumpers. And for all that and more, they turn to the experts at Tom's Bronco Parts. Tom's started off basically as a really small company out of the back of Tom's father's garage, Rusty's 4x4. And Tom would work there on the weekends as a high school kid. And then he got his first Bronco, drove it like a high school kid did, rolled it a couple of times, realized it was difficult to find parts for him. So he started collecting all the used parts he could, selling them to other people. And then just by word of mouth, it grew. He started a smaller business on his own, kind of went in house with his dad and opened up the full Tom's Bronco parts. And you know, started selling parts out of the local newspaper and it's just grown ever since to almost 30 employees now. The inventory, the growth of the company has just been something that astonishes me still to this day. I don't think anyone anticipated it. Even Tom himself will say, you know, it's a hobby that he got extremely lucky and built a very successful business out of. As far as like in-house manufacturing, we don't do much of it. A lot of it is quality control, but we do a lot of product development. We see an area in the market where either a product isn't up to our quality from the standards that we expect, so we go out and we develop a product that is, or possibly there's a need for a product that hasn't been developed yet, so we'll take the time to bring one of our Broncos in. A lot of the employees here have Broncos, so we use those as test vessels for all the different products that we develop. We offer a variety of products, full interior kits, which give you a lot of the creature comforts you're used to in the modern vehicles, and then LED lighting, power steps, and then we also offer all your accessories for your coyote swaps, such as headers, motor mounts, things of that nature. And that's our goal, is to be able to offer a variety of products that fits everyone from the guys who are spending an insane amount of money restoring the Bronco, putting all modern drivetrain, and having it end up being a $100,000, $200,000 Bronco, or to the guy who still takes it down to Moab or Rubicon and really abuses it. And we want to be able to provide the products for all of our customers. On the front of our Bronco, we have a radius arm, coil spring type suspension. This stuff works really good. It moves pretty much in an up and down plane and it pivots back here. But since we have the big coyote engine, a bunch of extra weight, like we talked about earlier, we're gonna run four shocks on the front. The bottom, we've got an eyelet with a bushing, and at the top we have a stud. This part here, this is the dust boot. This is what keeps all the dirty stuff out of your shocks while you're off-roading. I'm gonna take this off so we can look a little deeper. And this is the shock stud, and it connects to the piston rod. As this compresses and extends, there's a set of valves in here. They basically look like washers with rubber O-rings on them and holes drilled in them. Like on the stock shocks, you might have one, and that's it, that's all you get. But on a shock like this, there are gonna be multiple valves in there to do different jobs. Some of the valves are gonna be working when the shock is compressing, and some of them are gonna be when the shock is extending. What that does is that helps control the rate of movement of this suspension. This is the original mount. It mounts it on the radius arm, and then it has upper shock mount here. So we're going to start there. We're going to put our washer and our bushing on. We've got to compress this thing, and it is a lot stiffer than the original stuff. Like we talked about earlier, sometime in the 80s, this thing got converted from single shock to quad shock. Front mount is on the front part of the axle here. So we're gonna install this one on the front side and then 
we'll move to the back. On our upper mounts, these are specifically designed to fit down inside here. There's a recess. That way, when you tighten it down, the bushing helps center the shock. Okay, front shock's on. We can talk about shock orientation for a second. The way these shocks are laid out here, you have the reservoirs at the bottom, studs at the top. For what we're doing here, this works perfectly fine. Not complicated, Stone Age reliable, no problems. But in some of your racing applications and your lightweight vehicle applications, you can actually change these around. These can actually be reversed. In other words, the shock body will be up here and the stud mount will be down here. The reason why they do that is it gets weight off the axle assembly. When the weight is all down here, this is what you call unsprung weight. So the weight of the shock body is added to the axle and all that has to move up and down. In a lot of racing stuff, you can actually flip these upside down, valve them accordingly, and it takes the weight off of here and puts it up here. So the suspension doesn't have to do the extra work of carrying all this weight. And that's the difference between sprung and unsprung weight. But with the front shocks done, Richard is set to move on to the back. We'll see that when we return, and we'll learn how Ford found a need and came up with the idea for the Bronco in the first place. Don't touch that remote. Learn more about the Ford Bronco story in Todd Zerker's new book. Get your copy of Ford Bronco, a history of Ford's legendary 4x4 at cartechbooks.com and at popular retailers in-store and online. The Bronco wasn't the first utility vehicle that Ford did. That was actually the Ford GPW Jeep that they built back in World War II to help meet the war effort. Those Jeeps then came back to the U.S. and helped fuel the recreational vehicle craze that really started in the 40s and 50s and then on into the early 60s here in the United States. That brought on the International Scout. Ford started to take notice in the early 60s, hey, this is a real small segment, but it's starting to grow. We think we need to jump in here and offer something in this market as well. So they started in the early 60s working on a design of it and in 1966 brought the Bronco out to market. I think it was very well received. Ford actually did their homework when they designed the Bronco because they first went to quite a number of four-wheel drive clubs across the country and asked those enthusiasts what they would want to see if Ford was going to design a vehicle. And so from those surveys they realized that they wanted vehicles that could go faster on the highway than Jeeps and Scouts did, offered a little more creature comforts, more power, a better ride, better handling. You know, the Jeeps and the Scouts, to be fair, were fairly crude, and so you couldn't really go more than about 45 or 50 miles an hour on the highway with a lot of those vehicles. Even in the early 60s, that was slow, and people were just wanting more and more creature comforts, and so Ford really looked to that when they went through with the design on the Bronco. Last week, we saw mechanics Richard and Omar install the suspension on this Restomod 4x4, but this week, it's all about shocks. The fronts are on, now it's time to move to the back of the Bronco. On the rear, the rear shock mount is down here, the upper shock mount is here. What you'll notice is there's a little bit of an angle going on here. There's a reason for that. On a leaf spring style suspension, like what we have on the rear, as you accelerate the pinion, tries to climb. The rear end actually rotates and you get what's called axle wrap or spring wrap. What happens is the spring actually tries to twist. Well, what the shock does is sitting at an angle like that, as the rear end tries to rotate, it's working against the shock. It helps not only dampen the up and down movement of the spring, but it helps dampen the twisting motion that you get from acceleration. I'm going to tighten this rear shock up. We're going to throw the wheels back on, and then I'll show you a little comparison between the side with shocks and side without shocks. All right, Gilbert's going to help me out here for a second. We're going to show you the difference between the side with no shocks, my side, and the side with the shocks installed on Gilbert's side. So here we go. No shock side and the shock side. As you can see, it barely moves on Gilbert's side. Now we're both going to do it at the same time. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. And now you get to see what we get to do when nobody's around all day. <laughs> Go to any Bronco event and you'll find that everyone has his or her own idea of how to restore one. Some folks like to do extreme modifications and some like to keep the Broncos just like they were when they came off the showroom floor. 
Well, I seen this Bronco the first time when it just came out of a barn after sitting in there for 26 years. It was all faded, had ugly aluminum running boards on it, and had 66 hubcaps on it, which I think are really ugly, but they're worth a lot of money. And uh, my friend bought it, so I said, let me drive it. And he let me drive it, and I fell in love with it and had to have it. The only experience I had with Broncos previous to that is this same friend had a 66 we used to run in the river bottom, and we would show Jeeps where they couldn't go. Started out, I just drove it the first year just the way it was. It had big dents in this side where a tractor backed into it and it set out with the top and doors off and I was redoing stuff and finally I got it too nice for that and now it sits in the garage all the time. <laughs> for one, I got the paint for free. <laughs> it's actually uh, Sherwin-Williams tractor paint and it's a really good durable paint. It holds up good, doesn't hold dirt. I'm kind of what you call a purist, so I tried to keep everything as stock as what I could. I don't go for the cut fenders, I don't go for the lift and all that. I just like what Ford made, and that's just the way I run it. It's like a family member. People come up and try to buy it, and I always tell them it's not for sale, you know, a ridiculous price it would take to get it out of my hands. Uh, I've got a granddaughter I plan on passing it down to that I started taking to car shows when she was in her car seat. She's 12 now and 5'7", so she'll be driving it pretty soon. Stop! Yes, every vehicle needs to stop. And when we come back, our burgeoning Bronco build gets some brand new brakes. Brand new Muscle Car Classic Bronco is brought to you by Wild Horses 4x4. Isn't it time you answered the call of the wild? Rhino Hitch, the most versatile adjustable hitch on the market. And by No Limit Engineering. We build them, we test them, and we drive them. Welcome back to Brand New Muscle Car in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, the automobile was invented about 100 years ago, and ever since then, man has just tried to go faster and faster. Quite frankly, speed was easy to come by, but stopping these cars, that was another matter altogether. Up until the 1970s, just about every car had drum brakes like this on all four corners. But since then, the advent of disc brakes and new materials means better performance, shorter stopping distances, and improved safety. Time to put brakes on the Bronco. We're gonna put the rear brakes on right now. What we have here from Willwood is the rear rotor. It's a nice drilled and slotted rotor. What the, the drilled holes and the slots do is they help get the heat out of the rotor. There's a lot of brake heat, especially when you got big wheels and tires, stuff like that. This helps get rid of all that heat, which gives you better performance as far as stopping. It gets rid of all the mud and the goo from between the brake pad and the rotor surface. And then if you see on the inside right here, there's actually a small brake drum. And what that's for is for the parking brake assembly. I'll show you that in a second. What we got next up, this is the actual caliper adapter bracket. What this does is this is the interface between the axle flange and the actual caliper. This is how we made it to the axle. And then finally, we have our brake pads, which fit inside the caliper. All right, these little items here, these are actually not washers, they're shims. There's a difference. A shim is used to adjust. Well, what we do is we use these to move the caliper bracket in and out, forward and backward, because especially on old stuff like this Bronco, you don't know if, any, if the axle tube straight, if the axle flange is bent. You know, the tolerances in the 60s just wasn't like what it is today. So what we do is we use these shims held to a very high tolerance, different thicknesses, different diameters. And we got big, small, wide, narrow, different colors. And once we get all of this stuff put on here, we'll have to shim the caliper forward and backward probably, and left and right some too. So we'll get this stuff put on. This is our Willwood kit to put on the 9 inch in the back of the Bronco. We have our backing plate. These are our parking brake shoes. We talked about that earlier. And then this is the actual flange and the bracket. We're going to put the rotor on. This is our indexing ring. This fits over the hub flange. And this is what centers the rotor. Next up, put the rotor on. We're going to take a couple of lug nuts to hold the rotor on straight so we can make sure that the caliper lines up correctly. These just need to be finger tight for mock-up. Next, caliper adapter bracket. Right now we're just going to put everything together hand tight to make sure that uh, our caliper is running straight with the rotor. 
right, next up, brake caliper, attachment bolts. This is where the shimming part comes in. When we put this on, we need to make sure that the caliper is in line with the rotor so we can put our brake pads in and everything runs straight and true. All right, everything actually looks pretty good. Last part will be the brake pad. We put these in just like so. Put the wheel on, done deal. Those are nice and red. Whose call was that, Richard? That was yours. No. Oh, yeah, I did give you the choice. Next week on Brand New Muscle Car. Holes and dents are easy to fix, but we find out where the Tulsa team turns when they need all new body panels. And the mechanics hand the Bronco back over to the bodywork team as this Bronco Roadster gets some doors.